This particular piece has me reminiscing a little bit. Do you remember this? Some of you hated the Baby Shark reference, but to be honest, that was one of the most fun times of 2019. Oppo had a lot of phones coming out, all marking the Reno name, and there were some really fun design aspects to each and every one of the phones that came out. In particular, that pop-up camera. It's probably not a stretch for me to say that 2019 was the year of the Oppo Reno. Not only did the 10 times zoom come out, but the Reno 2 even came out not too long after that, and now we're coming up on the third iteration. But even though I am excited to be using the Oppo Reno 3 Pro, there are a couple of design choices on this new version of the Reno that make me think about what once was. Hey, it's Joshua Vergara. What's going on, everybody? This is the Oppo Reno 3 Pro, my first look. Now, I have been using the Oppo Reno 3 Pro for a little bit of time now, but that was a pre-production unit. And then I got a version of the phone that is closer to retail from India. After all, that was where the launch announcement was made, was in India, and that's the reason why the box has a couple of logos and specific brandings from India. The unboxing experience is fairly standard, but there are a couple of aspects to it that I do enjoy. Uh, number one, the fact that it does come with a clear case. This is something that I really love about Oppo unboxings. The fact that it comes with a clear case something that you can use to get better grip on the phone and also protect it a little bit. And there's actually a pair of 3.5 millimeter headphones in here. So uh, that is your clue that there is in fact a headphone jack on this phone. Finally, there is the VOOC charger and this phone takes 30 watt VOOC charging, which is awesome. So consider the fact that even from the unboxing experience, a phone like the Reno 3 Pro, which is actually very affordable, we'll get to that later, has some features that a lot of flagships these days tend to not have. But then you power on the device and that's where you see that some things have changed. Now, you do get a full HD plus display on here. It is a super AMOLED screen, but then on the top left there, you'll see that there is a pill cutout. There are two cameras on the front, but we'll get to the cameras a little bit later. My main thing about this is that the Oppo Reno 3 Pro no longer has something that I felt was part of the DNA of the Reno line, and that is, of course, the pop-up camera. This is something that we're starting to see less and less of as 2020 is going on, and I will admit, I'm a little bit disappointed at that because those were really fun design choices that tackled a number of different things people wanted out of their smartphones, mainly the fact that they wanted all screen all the time. I get why some manufacturers might want to start moving away from the pop-up camera, but at the same time, it just makes it seem like we're getting back to a place where most smartphones kind of look the same. That's not to say that this phone isn't beautiful. There is this wonderful blue color that I have here, and even though this glossy finish gets really smudged up with my fingerprints, I do enjoy the fact that I have a nice looking phone uh, that reflects light beautifully. And even though there are four cameras on the back, Oppo did not fall into the same design philosophies as some other manufacturers. All four cameras are lined right up in this fairly minimal piece. It does stick out a little bit though, so that's the other reason why having a nice little clear case in the box is really nice to have. It evens out the lines uh, so that you're not scratching everything up with this camera bump. All right, underneath the surface, this time you get the MediaTek Helio P95. Uh, this is a new processor that should be able to bring some pretty great performance on here. One of the other main features of this processor is the fact that it can support a 64 megapixel camera, which is the main camera that is on the rear. All Oppo Reno 3 Pros get eight gigabytes of RAM, but you can get 128 or 256 gigabytes of onboard storage. And finally, that 30 watt VOOC charging will help you power up a 4,025 milliamp hour battery, which is quite a lot considering that this phone is really easy to handle and it's fairly minimal in terms of its design output. In a world full of phones that are starting to get bigger and bigger and bigger, it's nice to see that a pro model from Oppo is managing to keep things fairly middle ground. And so far performance seems to be exactly where it should be for a flagship phone. I have been able to play a few games on here. I mean, there are a lot of really great releases coming out in the last couple of weeks and I've been able to play them on here without any issues. And then running around color OS and in between applications has been a breeze. And coming from someone that has seen Color OS grow from its inception, I have to say, this operating system has come a long way. It is updated all the way to Android 10, which is nice to see. Uh, and from there, there are a number of different features that didn't used to be in previous versions of Color OS. My main takeaway here is that even if you're not very familiar with Oppo as a company, the actual experience of using this phone is going to be fairly familiar if you've used any other Android phone before. So we will go ahead and jump into those cameras, and I will address the first thing that I mentioned in this video. No more pop up camera, but you do get this pill on the front that is a dual camera starting at 44 megapixels for the main sensor and then a 2 megapixel depth sensor. Clearly the selfie game is important to Oppo in this particular phone. With 44 megapixels on the front, you can expect some pretty high res selfies, uh, but there is one thing that I noticed inside of the camera app. Even with that many megapixels, you still cannot record 4K front-facing video. Of course, this may or may not be a priority when it comes to these Asian phones because beauty modes and all of the different options that are available for them tend to be what you see the most when it comes to taking selfies. 
And then one nice addition is a bokeh mode for video, which allows you to blur out the background so you can separate yourself from it. Uh, now that we don't have a pop-up camera, is it something that you miss or are you okay with it as far as the Oppo Reno 3 Pro is concerned? Another reason why I'm not going to go too far into the cameras, at least at this juncture, is that the camera software still needs to be updated. Oppo themselves have told us that firmware updates are going to be coming in order to get the camera to what they call final software. I know, a bit of a frustrating thing, but uh, that will give me a little bit more time to actually use this phone on the daily and give you a better look at the camera, probably in something like a real world camera test, which is something, again, I enjoy doing with the original Oppo Reno 10x Zoom. 10 times zoom is a thing of the past, and now we don't even really need a telescopic camera in order to achieve 20 times hybrid zoom, which is what the Oppo Reno 3 Pro is touting here. All of that is achieved by combining the four different cameras here on this device. You have a 64 megapixel main sensor, a 13 megapixel telephoto that itself is a two times optical zoom, an eight megapixel ultra wide, and then one last two megapixel monochrome depth sensor. And as I mentioned earlier, there's no 4K on the front, but there is 4K on the rear. There are a couple of things to keep in mind with that though. Namely that when you go to 4K resolution, you are not able to use the wide angle camera anymore. That's a bit of a bummer because you know I like using wide angle, especially for vlogging, uh, but the wide angle camera seems to do a pretty good job despite being only eight megapixels. We have seen more in other smartphones. The zoom is pretty effective too, and Oppo clearly has confidence in their zoom levels and quality because the three different levels of zoom you get start out one times, then you get two all the way up to five times. You can then slide it down to get all the way to 20 times, but uh, as far as the quality is concerned, I don't imagine most people will be looking at 20 times zoom photos and expecting a lot of sharpness. It seems as if Oppo is trying to be a little bit more practical when it comes to their camera setup. After all, how often do you actually zoom all the way out to even 10 times? And that might be the reason why the main levels when you tap that little icon are one, two, five, and wide. But of course, one of the main things that you can do on here is take 64 megapixel photos straight out of that main sensor. It is nice to see high res photos like this and 64 megapixels will obviously uh, make all of the other modes turn off, including zoom levels. But then you can take it one step further by going into the pro mode and turning on the 108 megapixel setting. Now, as far as the quality is concerned, I'm not going to give any opinions on that because again, we're not really on final camera software yet, at least that's what Oppo says. So we're going to give it a little bit of time and I'll come back to it in a final review. But I already get the sense from this phone that Oppo has found a way of actually molding together a bunch of different features from a bunch of different bits and pieces to provide a flagship experience that in any other phone would cost way more. And that's because this phone in India is going to start out at the US equivalent of $400. That's a really good price for a phone that provides this level of performance and these many cameras. And it's something that we don't see a whole lot in the US and we should be seeing more of in the mid-range game. But again, this is a pro device. This is not necessarily a mid-range phone, at least by Oppo standards. This is supposed to be a flagship device and it does a really good job of achieving many levels of what a flagship needs. It's hard not to get excited for a phone that is at $400, but provides these many features. There are certain things on here that we do miss uh, compared to other flagships. And in my case, as I've been saying in this video, I do miss uh, some of the things that made the Reno so unique, but you can't deny that there's a lot to like in this particular phone, and it could be a very reliable daily device, especially for the frugal user who doesn't want to pay an arm and a leg. All right, I know I went at length when it came to this phone, but I have been using it for a little while now. It's just that we're waiting for Oppo to finally put out final software. I know that this is a kind of a pain point with a lot of people out there, but ultimately there are so many phones coming out right now that I don't mind taking my time a little bit more with this one. Besides, there are a lot of other phones that you can look forward to in final reviews here at my channel. So make sure you subscribe to my channel if you haven't already, drop some likes on these videos and get into the comment sections. I also put cards up from time to time, so make sure you get into those polls because I want to hear what you guys have to think in multiple different ways here at JV. From there, I'm going to go ahead and call it on this one though. Thank you so much for watching. And until my next video, I would just remind you to enjoy your tea, everybody.